frequently miss fouls and that in All right. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about commonly misinterpreted fouls or missed fouls which would be like travels, block charges, um, carries, backcourt violations, uh, the five second violations and so we're going to start with the travel. The most common travel you'll see is if he's stopped with the ball and I'm coming for it. And if I come to a stop, I can't pick up this foot before I dribble because I've come, I haven't come to a jump stop at the same time. So this is one, two. So I have to, the ball has to leave my hand before I can take another step. Um, another common one will be, like I said, with the jump stop. If they come not simultaneously, it, it, this will happen all over the floor. Um, if they take a step before they put the ball on the floor, that's a travel. And one of the things I've learned that helps identify is if he's pivoting and you hear a squeak before he puts the ball on the ground, that usually means he's pushing off this and that's a travel because he's already taken the two steps. Um, yeah, is there? The biggest thing is just when they land, it has to be simultaneously. It can't be more than two steps. If they come, like if they go ahead and catch the ball and they land on, they can still use that. Pivot. But mm -hmm. if they came down one, two, they can't. Yeah. Um. The next one is yes. So they can't come down one, two all together, or they can't. Come well, they, they they can, but they can't. Then he can't pivot. He can't pick it up and then start moving like that because then. So he's established his pivot for once and like that, right? I can't. He can't. This left foot. Um, uh, the next is blocking and charging, which there is sometimes a rule with R. We don't do that. It's uh, you can get a charge anywhere on the court. Yeah, and um, I'm sure Andy told you guys that a common rule of thumb is if they hit and fall together usually a charge but there are uh, extenuating circumstances and if they fall apart then it's usually a block you'll normally see a player if the offensive player who's coming in and he kind of picks the ball up like a football and he leans in that's a pretty good indication that he's committing a charge um, you also see players try to like if they're waiting to take a charge they might move their body like that and that's a pretty uh easy call as a block like we saw in that last video where it might have looked like a charge from up here on the baseline we saw that it was a block because he leaned into the guy after being established um okay the biggest thing with looking for the offensive charge is a lot of players will go ahead and seek out that contact so they and they'll go ahead and like lower their shoulder into the person or they'll go ahead and just put enough where they can run it into the person. A defender has the right to go straight up and backwards. They cannot move on to the uh, offensive player or um, bring their arms down. So basically, when a defender is going hang guard, they can have from their feet to the ceiling and then backwards. So it, they can still be moving backwards and get hit and it still be a charge. Because they have that, that would still be considered legal guard. But any way of moving forward up to the person, they have to be set and get feet. Um, offensive player notice, like, whenever a person's coming around, you can't go ahead and um, set a screen behind him, outside his vision, and then the person guard. Like, it doesn't have to end up being um, blocked. Charge, or, well, that would be blocked. Screen. Yeah, yeah. Um, if I come up and set a screen right here on Brad, what, what doesn't he have? He doesn't have time and something else he doesn't have. Can't see. Yeah. He can't see, but he doesn't have space. He doesn't have space to avoid it. So you got to give him time and space to be able to avoid that. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, and if especially if there's um, a fast break or they're breaking a press and you'll have someone uh, running alongside uh, the ball handler coming up, even if he's giving him space, like he's trying to uh, escort him to his space or whatever, um, if at any point the ball handler lowers his shoulder, moves moves into him, that isn't like, so like Alex said, he, uh, defenders have the right from their feet to the ceiling. So if the ball handler enters that space and knocks the defender off their like off balance or enters into their space, it's it'd be a charge. The next one's the legal screen. Um, the next one we were going over is the legal screen, which we kind of hinted up that in the back of with being behind the person. Um, one big thing is you can't be without, like outside your body, and uh, a couple of you guys did do football, like with the blocking there. You can't use your arms outside your body. You can't use your legs. Like, there's some people that try to go ahead and get that, just that little extra reach, and 
that ends up being really useful. Um, and also for screens, you might see some guys that'll set the screen and they'll do something like this. That's not legal. They have to be within their shoulders, their shoulder width because obviously that has elbows and that could lead to someone getting hurt, yeah. Um, so any screens like this, you'll see some people, if, like, the, if a defender sees a screen coming, he might do one of those, like, like Alex said, with football, you'll see people try to cheat or they'll maybe lean their arm out or something. Or they might just altogether shuffle and obviously that's an illegal screen or a block, but yeah. That, as a trail, that's probably the most common thing you'll see or you have to look out for are illegal screens. Um, is it backcourt? Yeah, backcourt violation. All right, so next we're going to move the backcourt violation. So we're just going to come right over here. Um, like I said earlier, there are three points of contact you have to establish in the front court in order to, for the backcourt to be in play. So if, I'm, if I have the ball here and I dribble and I even put my foot on the line and then come back, that's not a backcourt because I never had both feet and the ball in the front court. And the most common thing you'll see is, especially from the fans, if they come across the court like that, or if they're holding the ball like this, you have yelling, being like, oh, that's a backcourt, blah, 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 but no, because they have to have two feet and the ball across the court. Um, yeah, and if, if any part of their feet touch the uh, midcourt line after they've established in the front court, it's a backcourt. It doesn't have to be a full foot or anything. Yeah. And then for the ball, does it just have to be over the line or does it have to be make contact with the floor on the other side of the line? Just has to be across, right? Yeah, so I'm dribbling. I'm almost over. But this is not back with right? Now are we in the front court? That's a good question. Yes. Okay. So once you stop dribbling and pick that up, now the ball is on the stats of range. So if you're dribbling, you have that active dribble in the back court. Then it's still in the back court, right? You won't see it a whole lot because most people, when they run across, they come straight across. But if you have someone going like this, be wary of that. Once you pick that ball up in the front court, you're in the front court. Yeah. Um, and you'll see it on like when they're trying to break a press, if they have, if they're trying to set a trap here, if the ball handler's coming here and he's like, he wants to change direction and he's coming this way, he might, there might be a time where as trail, you have to be looking down the mid court line to see, to make sure that he has, if the, all three points are in the front court to be able to call that backcourt violation. Um, yeah. Uh, saving it, they're saving it from going backcourt. It, it can break the plane, right? They, they hold it out over and pull it back. It's not like it breaks the plane, it's back to a touch. So, so yeah, everything in basketball, it doesn't really matter about the plane, it's all about the line and making physical contact outside. Yeah. yeah. Because it's like it's essentially an out of bounds lane where you can, as long as you're in bounds and you launch yourself to try to bring it back without landing, yeah. you're all right. That's a good question. Yeah, for sure. Any other questions about anything we covered earlier? Um, oh, uh, there's carries. Um, a lot of people think that, yeah. If it do, the main rule of thumb is if it doesn't normally rest in your hands sitting still, it's not a carry. It, like I could be dribbling the ball and going like that, but if as soon as I try to stop the ball and it rolls out of my hand, it's not a carry. Um, You'll have a lot of players that will do that. As soon as that ball kind of crosses where you could hold it, like I can hold it. Um, I've seen a couple of people where they'll go like, it's just because it's just that extra second to react. They don't want any lost it. <laughs> but um, they'll pick it up and then go ahead and put it down. And you, typically if they do it once, they're going to do it again. Like you can, that's where, that's something that you've built into your dribbling that it's kind of something to notice. Like that's where um, you'll typically be able to notice later if you weren't as positive about it, but it, um, it's something to look out for. Uh, yeah, and as as you referee more games, um, you'll notice certain ball handlers dribble a certain way. Like they'll be more point guard. This will be more for like point guards who like to dribble a lot and they're trying to cut around screens or weave between defenders. So you'll be more keen to them as opposed to like the big man down low. He not necessarily will be susceptible to this. So it's just and it comes with experience. But yeah, like the rule of thumb is if it will sit still in the palm of your hand. Yeah, like that, that's a carry. As soon as it comes underneath, they can have it on the side, they could have it slightly under, but it's, if it's fully facing up, then that'd be a carry. Um, 
think I'm missing anything else. Do you all call a lot of um, Some of them happen pretty quick, so there might be missed, but definitely if, if you look for it, you'll see it probably more often. Same thing with travels. Like if you might be looking for a, a hand check or if someone's setting a legal screen and they might travel at the same time. So that's why you just want to be watching all parts of the player. And the biggest thing is like we're dealing with a lot of players that um, um, we'll go ahead and we're not dealing with like you have a wide variety of players that will play so you can get you'll have a lot of travels and carries in the game the biggest thing is to be looking out for them and in the beginning you it's going to be harder to notice but as you keep going you'll notice more and more um what are you gonna say i don't know if, you, if this is something you've got to cover or not but when you got a three-point shooter how long are you watching them to see if there's a foul like what has to be completed before you can stop? they have to go up and come down without being touched by a defender because they have the right to like a defender they have the right to from the ground to the ceiling where their feet are so i don't know if you guys seen in the nba there'll be guys that are shooting and they'll stick their legs out and they'll get hit like that they that is a foul and so they could because they have the right to go up and come down no matter what um another thing is post play um i don't know if you want to we can step down to the block. Pretend you're in the post. Okay, so what you'll see in post play is just imagine if you can give him the ball. Um, if you're defending someone, if you're, if you're lead and you're watching a matchup in the post, they can have an arm on the back, that's fine, but as soon as he passes the ball to him, has to come off because he now he has to have freedom to move where he wants you can move with him with waist body as long as he's not entering into him you could have it you can have a guide hand but as long as he's not impeding where the ball handler is going it's fine <laughs> um and if he has two and if, and if the defender has um two hands on the uh guy in the post that's a foul too if he's trying to maybe overcome over top of him the block You'll see that a lot with especially physical big guys. Um, that obviously is a hold, hit, pull, pick it. Um, the thing is, typically when you are defending the post, you are allowed to have that hand in front of you if it's against your body. You can't. Um, yeah, you can't be fully extended. Yeah. Yeah, you can't be extended with it. So if they basically if there's a person kind of body them out and they have it in between them, that's not a foul. But the moment they fully extend it. Yes, Alex. So don't mistake like a feeler hand for a foul. Because you can you can have this. You know, you're allowed, hey, I'm playing defense on you, I need to know where you are. Okay, so don't mistake that. Where you extend where I push Alex off where he's trying to go, that's where it becomes a foul. With post play, with hand check and all that stuff. That's that's got it. Um the hand checks pretty much when you're going ahead and um, pinning their wrist or their arm against their body. So you're kind of, with your hand, you're checking theirs. Um, yeah, and like uh, Matt said, you can have that guide hand. And if even if he's further away from me, if he's dribbling towards me and I bring my hand in, that's fine because it's not bothering him in any way. His hands on is automatic. Yeah, two, yeah, if he has two points of contact, Ball that's... handler coming towards me. I put two hands on, I can put him wherever I want to. All right, if he has the wall, he has the right to go where he wants to go. I can't push him around. Okay, so if someone puts two hands on, call it. You get a lot of uh, guys who play pickup ball who come out here, and they're not used to someone telling them, no, you can't do it. So, right, resist a little bit. Start. If you call consistently, yeah. they'll get used to it. And it'll, it'll make your night a lot easier if you establish that early. Because if you let it go throughout the game and you call it at like three seconds left and they're up by one and it's the team losing you call it for, they're going to get angry because you haven't been calling it all game. So if you set the tone early, they'll know that, oh, I can't, I won't have two hands on them. I'll just ride them with either one or the other. And he'll probably tell you, what you permit, you promote. So from the get-go, if you're going to grab those hand checks, you got to grab it. If you're going to grab that foul, you got to grab it. You may miss one, it's going to happen. But if you let it go all game, you're just telling them, hey, this is okay. When actually it's illegal. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, I think that's it. Um, kickball, um, if I'm just standing here and Alex is trying to pass to someone behind me and it just hits my leg and I'm not moving my leg or I'm not trying to like block it, that's not a kickball. If the second I intentionally try to block his pass with my leg or anything below my waist, it would be a kickball. Um, yeah, and I think that's it for... Yep.